Good morning. Uh, as Mr. Lyra mentioned, today is Ascension Day, 40 days after the resurrection, and so we will celebrate that in our worship. Uh, let's begin with our opening dialogue. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God has gone up with a shout. When you ascended on high, you led captivity captive. God reigns over the nations. The Lord Most High is awesome. He subdued nations for us. God has gone up with a shout. Let us praise our ascended king. The Ascension account from Acts chapter 1. I wrote my first book, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began doing and teaching until the day he was taken up, after he had given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After he had suffered, he presented himself alive to the apostles with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and told them things about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for what the Father promised, which you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they were together with him, they asked, Lord, is this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, 
and to the ends of the earth. After he said these things, he was taken up while they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. They were looking intently into the sky as he went away. Suddenly, two men in white clothes stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mountain called the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And our gospel reading from the night before Jesus died, John 16. But now I am going away to him who sent me. And now one of you asks me, where are you going? Yet because I have told you these things, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is good for you that I go away. The word of the Lord. I just need some space. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I'm not really ready to be in a relationship with anyone right now. I, I like you more as a friend. And the old timer, it's not you, it's me. Maybe you've used one of those lines before, maybe you've had one of those lines used on you before, or maybe you've avoided them altogether, but all of those lines have one purpose, to break up with someone, but to try to do it in a way that doesn't seem quite so bad. But I don't know. I, I don't think the success rate on those lines is very high. I think most of the time the people on the receiving end of those lines recognize them for what they are. They're just lines. They're a way to try to avoid an uncomfortable truth by dressing up a nice sounding lie. You know that Jesus doesn't lie. And just before our gospel reading, in fact, he told Thomas and the other disciples that he is the truth. Uh, and yet, when you hear those words from the night before he died, it's kind of hard sometimes not to wonder if Jesus isn't giving the apostles and the entire human race a breakup line. Nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. It's good for you that I go away. Think how awesome it'll be, guys, when we don't see each other anymore. It's going to be so great. Can't wait. It sounds kind of strange. Uh, but on this Ascension Day, we want to consider that Jesus ascending is not a breakup and that he's not even really gone, but rather because of what Christ is up to now, where Christ is now, and what Christ will do. Uh, he's telling the truth. Ascension Day is the day to rejoice and not to be sad. Moving someplace warm, traveling the world, getting really, really into lawn care, or maybe just waking up when you want to, instead of when your alarm tells you. These are all things that people look forward to when they finally hit retirement. You put in your time for your boss and for your company, and now this part of your life is for you. If there's ever anybody who's earned a little bit of me time and a retirement, that would be Jesus. Nobody worked harder than Jesus, nobody went through worse than Jesus, and nobody did it with more on the line than Jesus did. Man deserves some time to himself after literally going through hell to redeem humanity. But one of the reasons that Christ can truthfully say that his ascension is a good thing is because his ascension is not his retirement. Jesus is still incredibly busy, and more than that, Jesus is incredibly busy for you. And he's busy doing all sorts of things, but one in particular stands out. He gave you a preview of it the night before he died on his way to Gethsemane when Jesus prayed what's called his high priestly prayer, going to his father on behalf of himself, on behalf of his disciples, and on behalf of you. We call that interceding, pleading before God for the case of another. And that's what Jesus is doing for you right now in heaven. Uh, the Apostle John wrote this, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Far from being retired, Jesus is essentially taking up a second career as your lawyer as your defense attorney, as the one who pleads your case personally before God, and the one who can introduce the best evidence any lawyer has ever had. 
his blood shed for you and his holy life in exchange for yours. Nobody ever had a better lawyer. The writer of the Hebrews says, he is able to save forever those who come to God through him because he always lives to plead on their behalf. It's good that Christ ascends, that he makes himself invisible because he isn't retired. His ascension means that he can plead for you personally before the throne of God and hold up his spotless life in exchange for yours. If you've ever been babysitting or, or playing with a little brother or cousin, uh, you know that one game little kids like to play is hide and seek. You also probably know they're not always very good at it. Uh, little kids can usually get themselves out of sight, but generally as soon as the big cousin or the adult comes anywhere near them in the room, they start laughing like crazy. You don't see them, but they're obviously still there, and you know exactly where to find them because they give it away. And the same is true of Jesus. Uh, one of the reasons Christ's ascension is a good thing is because he's not really gone. He promised that the night before he died, before they left for Gethsemane, when he told his disciples, I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. And he promised it again after his resurrection when he famously told them, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We celebrate Ascension 40 days after Easter because Jesus stayed visible on earth for 40 days after his resurrection. And one purpose of those appearances to his disciples was to convince them, like Luke told Theophilus, that he really was alive and back from the dead. But in those resurrection appearances, Jesus is also showing them and showing us that since he is always with us, here's how and where you can find him, even when you don't see him with your eyes. Jesus spent Easter afternoon walking with two disciples on the road to Emmaus, where he opened the scriptures to them and told them everything that was said in the prophets about himself, causing them later on to say that their hearts burned inside of them as they listened because Jesus has promised to be in those scriptures when they are heard and when they are read. That's where you can find him, because those are the scriptures that testify about him. That night, Jesus appeared behind locked doors to the apostles, where the apostle John says he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. We call that the absolution, and you can find Jesus there any time that you hear that pronounced, because it's Christ himself who's speaking those words of forgiveness through his servant. A week later, when Thomas wanted something personal and something physical to reassure him that Jesus really was alive and really was for him, Jesus didn't deny him, but he invited him forward to touch his wounds and to know. And Jesus offers you that same chance at the altar to have something physical and have something personal so that you can know that he is alive and that your sins are forgiven. Jesus is with you in his supper. This is my body and this is my blood to strengthen and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. And on a mountain outside of Galilee, Jesus gave his followers their famous marching orders. Go and gather disciples from all nations by baptizing them because Jesus has promised to be in your baptism. It's where he connected you to everything that he did for you. It's where he wrote his name on you and claimed you as his own. And it's where he still is with you every day as you recall and you relive that baptism through repentance. Just because you don't see him doesn't mean he's not there. It's good that Christ ascends, that he makes himself invisible so that he can be with you every day in so many ways and bring with him the forgiveness of all your sins. Time was running out. They had one last chance to hit the target. And to everyone's shock, the X-Wing pilot turned off his guidance computer, took a deep breath, and fired a one in a million shot, but a shot that found the bullseye. The thermal exhaust port of a giant space station known as the Death Star, which soon exploded into a billion pieces. The galaxy was saved, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo got medals, and they all lived happily ever after the end. Except it wasn't the end. 
the Empire struck back, and the Jedi returned, and a million different action figures and books and prequels and spin-offs started popping up, and it's been going on for almost half a century now. The end of Star Wars wasn't really the end, it was just the beginning. One of the reasons that ascension is a good thing is because ascension is not the end. The disciples saw Jesus disappear from before their eyes. We see Jesus now only with the eyes of faith, but it will not be that way forever. Christ has prepared a place for you at his side, and ascension is the reminder that he's coming back to take you there. He promised that to his disciples the night before he died, before they left for Gethsemane, when he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. The angels that appeared to those gawking disciples on the first ascension day, they had it right. This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Ascension Day is the reminder that Christ will come back visibly for you. And because of his work for you on earth as your substitute and right now as your advocate, because of his presence with you right now in his word and his sacrament, that day is not a day to be afraid of. But instead, as Jesus said, it's a day to stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is near. God doesn't see your sins. God sees you covered in the blood of Christ and wearing the robe of his righteousness, and your ascended lawyer makes sure of it. God sees you as a fruitful branch connected to the vine of Christ, and your ascended Savior is with you every day to strengthen that connection so that you can see with your eyes what the Apostle John saw with his. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. His servants will worship him. They will see his face. His name will be on their foreheads. There will no longer be any night or any need for lamplight or sunlight because the Lord God will shine on them and they will reign forever and ever. It's good that Christ ascends, that he makes himself invisible because he will not be invisible forever. But he will return one day to take you to his side to be with him and to see him face to face in his kingdom of light that has no end. I wouldn't call myself a, a relationship expert, but my unsolicited advice today would be that if you need to end things with someone, it's probably better to just tell them the truth than it is to give them a line. But Christ's ascension isn't a breakup. Jesus is interceding right now for you. Jesus is present right now with you, and Jesus will return one day to take you, to be with him where you will see him, with all of his saints and all of his angels and all of his glory forever. God keep you watching and faithful until that day. Amen. Please join to sing our hymn.
receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.